Today, we will read a new story about Sri Chaitanya Das Babaji from Kachada, town of Kachada. So the, the parents of Chaitanya Das who lived in district Kachada in Bengal did not have any issue for a long time. They had no problem in life. They went to the temple of Mahaprabhu in Dhaka Dakshina in district Srihatta and made obeisance at the feet of Mahaprabhu and said to him plaintively, plaintively means like directly, benign Lord, you are ever so merciful. Have mercy on us and give us a child. We promise that if you kindly give us a son, we shall bring him up and finally surrender him at your feet for your service. His prayer was granted. He had a son. In consonance with his promise, in accordance with his promise to Mahaprabhu, he named him Chaitanya Das. But he became so attached to him that he could not fulfill his promise. The son grew up, received proper education, and began to earn his livelihood by, by doing service somewhere. He came to know about his father's promise to Mahaprabhu and became impatient to resign his job for the service of Mahaprabhu and thus to justify his name, Chaitanya Das, and be blessed. One day, he obtained permission from his parents to go to Dhaka, Dhaka Dakshina, to go to Dhaka Dakshina. So in Dhaka Dakshina, he went to the temple of Mahaprabhu. lay prostrate before him, he gave Dandavat, and prayed, Prabhu, you accepted me as your servant even before my birth. Now, why keep me away from your feet? Get me a guru under whose guidance I may serve you with all my heart and soul. Then he began to wonder about, wonder about in search of the Guru. One day, while lying under a tree in Shantipur, he was thus praying and complaining to Mahaprabhu. Since you have kindly brought me out of home 
and have to that extent released me from the clutches of Maya. Will you not get me a guru who can finally deliver me from bondage and surrender me at your lotus feet? How long will I keep wandering like this without any guidance or support? Praying and supplicating like this, he fell asleep. Praying and begging like this, talking like this, he fell asleep. Then Mahaprabhu appeared to him in a dream and said, Do not worry. Tomorrow, when you come, for my darshana in Navadvip, you will meet your guru. He also told him about the features of the guru so that he might recognize him easily. The next day, he went for the darshana of Mahaprabhu to the Mahaprabhu Mandir in Navadvip at the time of Mangala Arati or the first worship ceremony of the deity early in the morning. As he stood in the courtyard of the temple looking at Mahaprabhu, he turned around again and again to see if there was anyone there whose features resembled the Mahapurusha described by Mahaprabhu. Once, as he did so, he saw the tall figure of a Mahatma who seemed to be God intoxicated and from whose wet and reddened eyes it appeared that he always swam or swimming in the ocean of divine love and compassion. He noticed that he was standing behind him. He seemed to be very Mahatma, the very Mahatma about whom Mahaprabhu has spoke had spoken. He fell at his feet and began to wash them with the tears of his eyes. The Mahatma lifted him and gave him a loving embrace. Chaitanya Das told him about the person about whom Mahaprabhu had spoken to him in the dream and said, Kindly bless me by giving mantra and accept me as your servant forever. The Mahapurusha asked him, Are you Chaitanya Das? Do you live in district Kachada? As if Mahaprabhu had also told him about Chaitanya Das and asked him to initiate him, he immediately gave mantra 
in his ear. The Mahapurusha was Sri Radharaman Charandas. So again, we have story around Radharaman Charandas. Since that day, Chaitanya Das began to live with Radharaman Charandas. His devotion to him was exemplary. Whether he was asleep or awake, whether eating, drinking, talking or meditating, he thought of nothing and talked of nothing except the Guru. His Guru Sri Radha Raman Charandas. He was a sadaka of Gopi Bhava. It is with him that the Upashana of Gopi Bhava began amongst the followers of Radharaman Charandas Babaji. After some time, Chaitanya Das fell ill. He became sick. Radharaman Charandas sent him to Puri and asked Navadvip Das, who was then in Puri, that time in Puri, to arrange for his treatment and look after him. Navadvip Das lodged him in a room, so he put him in a room, in the old post office building of Harish Babu and asked a boy named Jayakopal to attend upon him, to take care of him. His treatment continued for eight months. Jaya Gopal served him with all his heart and soul. But his condition became worse and worse with every day that passed. After eight months, Radharaman Charandas went to Puri. On the Ratayatra day, when Lord Jagannath was being carried in Ratha or chariot to Bundicha Mandir, he and his companions were singing and dancing in front of the chariot. When the chariot reached Rajabari, suddenly something transpired in his mind and he quickly slipped out of the Sankirtan procession. So he quickly went out of Sankirtan procession. He entered the Ramachandi lane and sat in the veranda of the house of Sri Gopal Prashad Dut, the head clerk of the local post office. He looked very sad and grave, so sad and grave that people who passed through the lane could not muster courage, could not collect courage to ask him what worried him.
when Jagopal saw that Chaitanya Das was fast drawing towards death, he stood like paralyzed, aghast, and did not know what to do. So Chaitanya Das said to him, Jai Kopal, there is no cause at all for anxiety. You somehow manage to bring the Gurudev here. If you do that, then alone I shall think that you are my true friend. I want to die while looking at Sri Gurudev. There is only one thing that I can give you in return for this service. That is the Aprakrita or transcendental Gopi Bhava. So difficult to achieve even by the rishis. But which Gurudev has kindly bestowed upon me. I heartily give the same to you. You have it, and even while you serve the Lord in this world, experience the highest bliss of the transcendental world. Now Navadvip Das was going all around in search of Babaji Mahasaya or rather Ramanchara. When he came to Chaitanya Das, he was very much alarmed to his to see his condition. Jai Gopal told him that he was too anxious to see Gurudev before he died. Therefore, he again set out in search of Babaji Mahasaya. He found him sitting in the veranda of Gopal Prashad Dut in a pensive mood, completely oblivious of himself and the surroundings. There was no response from Babaji Mahasaya, not even a sign to show that he heard what Navadvip Das has said. Navadvip Das returned and sent Jai Gopal to Babaji Mahasaya. Jai Gopal was but a boy, just a boy. He could hardly master courage to go before Babaji Mahasaya. Going to speak to him was out of question. But one does not know what Shakti Navadvip Das gave him. He went and stood before Babaji Mahasaya and said commandingly, What kind of a Mahapurusha are you? Your disciple is dying and wants to have your darshana before he dies. But you are sitting here like one absolutely indifferent and unconcerned.
Come. Don't waste time. Babaji Mahashaya went and stood behind the bed of bed of Chaitanya Das. Navadvip Das said, Chaitanya, Dada has come. Chaitanya beckoned or tried with his eyes to say that he might come and stand before him. Babaji Mahashaya moved towards his feet. Chaitanya Das observed him from head to feet, then fixed his eyes upon his face. Navadvip Das lifted Babaji Mahashaya's right foot and placed it on Chaitanya's chest. Tears came out of the eyes of Chaitanya Das, as if he was tearfully bidding fa farewell to Babaji Mahashaya. Babaji Mahashaya was so far standing motionless and speechless. But now his heart broke, and tears streamed out of his eyes. He said, with his throat choked with emotion, O oh Chaitanya, you are leaving me to go where peace and happiness reign supreme. What can I say except that I take upon myself all your sins, past and present, so that you may go with a pure heart and attain the desired end. The loving service of the twin lords of your heart, according to your bhava. Meanwhile, the rata or chariot of Jagannath came up to Kundai uh, Bensahi Kundai ben and stopped there. Babaji Mahashaya's dear disciple Ramdas had so far been singing and dancing before the chariot. But now suddenly he felt mysteriously attracted and came running with the Kirtana party to Chaitanya Das. They were astonished to see a wondrous scene, a scene that was touching and delectable inspiring and elevating. Chaitanya's eyes were fixed on the face of Babaji Mahasha. And he was drowned in the ocean of bliss at the touch of his lotus feet. There was a smile on his face and horripilation of his hair stand on, e on end all over his body. 
as if he was not able to contain the happiness due to realization of the supreme end of life. They were, they were all inspired to sing aloud. Ha, Nita go Radesha. Ha, Hare Krishna, Hare Ra. So they sang with tears constantly streaming out of their eyes. All of a sudden, they saw that the entire body of Chaitanya Das trembled as leaves tremble in the breeze. His eyes widened. He seemed to see something new in Babaji Mahasha. He looked at him with exultation and astonishment. And with this, he breathed his last. Shall we call this the end of life? Or the attainment of a life much happier and peaceful. Kirtana continued for half an hour. During Kirtana, Chaitanya's face became more radiant. Navadvi Das removed the cloth from his chest. <clears throat> he found two papers under it. One containing Guru Vandana, or prayers to the Guru. And the other containing a hundred thousand names of Guru Dev. which showed his utter dedication to the feet to the feet of the guru babaji mahashai said with tears in his eyes and throat choked with emotion nitai chand has kindly given me the company of such a pure and dedicated soul I do not know why he had now deprived, deprived me of it, why he removed me, him from me. The body of Chaitanya Das was taken to seashore with a Kirtana procession. Babaji Mahashai himself washed it with the water of the sea, dressed it with his own kaupina and bahirvasha of cloth, and then clasped it and danced like one maddened with love, mad with love. The face of Chaitanya Das rested on his shoulder and his arms were flung round his neck. Baba continued the dance for a long time. Who could stop him from this? People who saw this were reminded of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dancing with the dead body of Thakur Haridas lifted in his arms. After some time, when Babaji Mahasaya came to himself, Govinda Das took the body of Chaitanya Das from him 
and laid it on the pyre of sandalwood. Fire was set to the pyre, and everyone circumambulated, circumambulated the burning pyre, dancing and singing. Anitai go Radesham, Hare Krishna, Hare Ram. So they were singing after going around the fire. So this was the story of Chaitanya Das Baba. So we can see here he was so much dedicated to his Guru Dev, totally dedicated to his Guru Dev. And in the end, he reached his Bhava, the spiritual world. He re reached Radeshyam. So I think we have time for one more. The next one, it's also not long. It's about Saki Kishori Dasi. So Saki Kishori Dasi was an Upashaka of Saki Bhava. So she was following Saki Bhava and was a companion of Lalita Saki. She became Sida or liberated at, the, at an early age. A brief account of her life appears in Charita Shudha, Volume 6, in the words of Sri Radharaman Charandas Deva and Lalita Saki. So the same is here reproduced in the book. One day, when Sri Radharaman Charandas was staying in the Agarpart Garden in Calcutta, he suddenly emitted blood, started bleeding, while washing his mouth in the morning. This made his companions anxious about his health. They said, what could it be due to? Does it indicate some disease? But Baba Mahashaya replied, this is due to some sorrowful happening in Puri. So this is because something bad is happening in Puri. Then he went and lay in his room and covered him, uh, himself with chadar from head to feet, with blanket, chadar. After half an hour, he uttered, he said, Kishori. Then again, he was quiet. At about 10.30 a.m., he got up and said to someone, I will go to Puri today. Inform Puri, the person who was called Puri. He had hardly said this when Pulin came with a telegram in his hand. He said, what news, Pulin? Seeing that Pulin was hesitant in replying, he said, I know that on the day following Radashtami, Uh, er, uh, 
Radharani accepted Kishori Das. So Radharani accepted Kishori Das. She is blessed. Arranged for my journey to Puri. I shall go today. The news spread in Agarpar that Baba Mahashaya had suddenly decided to go to Puri. Many people came and began to inquire about the reason for this sudden decision. Baba Mahashaya replied, Some time ago, a 20-year-old boy named Advaita Das took mantra from me and went to Vrindavan. After seeing all the holy places connected with the Leela of Sri Krishna, he went to Varshan. There he lived with Vairagya pronunciation and swept the temple of Radharani. He did not talk with anyone. In the evening, he covered his head with his chadar and danced before the Sri Vigraha of Radharani, or the form of Radharani. In the dance, he often lost himself in bhava. The people of Parshana loved him for his bhava bhakti. One day Radharani asked him in a dream to dance before her in the Vesh of a Gopi. He ignored this as a mere dream. After three, de three days, Radharani again appeared to him in a dream and said, You did not dance, as I had said. Tomorrow, I shall send you the dress of a gopi. You wear and dance before me. Remember, that is, you, that is your Siddhavesh. The next day in the evening, an old lady came with a sari and a blouse and said to him, Baba, you dance before Radharani every day. I like your dance very much. I give you this sari. <coughs> Sorry. I give you this sari and blouse so that you may wear them while dancing. So he began to dance in that dress. Slowly, he became so much attached to the, to the dress that he could not give it up. Howsoever much he tried to do that. People began to call him Kishori Dasi. After one year, he went to Puri and engaged himself in the service of Radha Kanta Dev in Janjapit uh, Mat.
everyone was charmed by his bhava and loving service of the deities. During the period of his service, the deities put on a new appearance. They looked so beautiful that even I sometimes wondered whether they were the same Shri Vigrahas or different, the same deities or different. Radharani accepted him yesterday and engaged him in her loving service in Nityalila for all times. I am happy at this, but I am sorry to have been deprived of his company because his very sight inspired Krishna Lila in my heart. Soon, soon Baba Mahashaya took leave of everyone to go to Puri. As soon as he reached Chanchapit Mat, Lalita Dasi and the others began to weep on account of the demise of Kishori Das. Baba Mahashai consoled them and inquired all about her. Lalita Dasi said, After you had gone from here, one day we received the news that you had left Medinipur without telling anyone where you were going. This caused anxiety and despondency in the heart of everyone. All of a sudden, Kishori Dasi came to me and said, Baba Mahashaya has left us all and gone we know not where. Navadvip Dada, Gokul Dada and Chaitanya Dada have broken the cord of affection with us and gone to the land of Lila from where there is no return. You are always in this post. If you also go, who will take care of us? Whose affection shall be the prop and support of our life? How shall we live? I said, you need not have any fear or anxiety on account of me. Thousands of dasis like me lie under the lotus feet of Radharani, to whom you are surrendered. You are also so dear to her. You should wholeheartedly and ceaselessly do the service she has kindly assigned to you. You will without doubt realize 
but you want. But Kishori said, no, Ma, my anxiety is so deep. I do not know what I should do. I said, foolish. Why be so desperate? You know that our Lord is merciful. He always takes care of us and fulfills all our desires and aspirations. He surely said, if he is so merciful, I promise that I shall pray to him with all my heart and shall try to leave the body before you. I tried laughingly to trifle with her, to joke with her, and said, Well, well, you need not waste your time in uh, frivolous displaying talks. Go and do your work. So she went. After a few days, I looked at her and said, Ishori, I can see from your face that, that you are in anxiety. What is it about? Kishori said, Nothing particular, Ma. All, I only keep thinking when Radharani will fulfill my desire. So, since uh, I had forgotten all about before said conversation, I thought she was referring to her sadhana. So I said, speak your heart to Radharani. When, uh, she has accepted you in her service. She is bound to fulfill your desire. Do not worry. And Kishori said, I do not worry. But I have to make two requests to you. If you promise to comply, I would say, I said, Kishori, you are childish. All right. I promise I shall do what you say as far as I can. Then Kishori said, My first request is that when I am about to die, you remind me of the name of my Siddha Swaru or transcendental body. My second request is that you kindly see that at the time of my death, nothing happens that is contrary to my Vesh and Bhava. So that is contrary to or actually bow and float. Very. This time, this time on account of the bhava, I saw in her face. I could not joke or trifle with what she said. So I said, Kishori, 
you always hurt me like uh, by talking like a mad person. Why not attend with all your heart and soul to the sweet and valuable service assigned to you and be blessed? And Kishori said, what can I do? I doubt whether I shall be able to serve till Radashtam. Just a day before Radashtami, she called me and said, Ma, I will not be able to do Takur Seva today. Please ask Govardhan to do it. So I did the same. But I was filled with anxiety. I called Kaviraj Durlirat and asked him to examine her. So this was a doctor. He examined her and said, she is perfectly well. I don't know, I do not understand why you are so anxious about her. There is nothing at all to fear. I was not satisfied. I called the doctor. Kaviraj was different, but doctors separately here. <laughs> he also examined and said, I do not see any cause for anxiety. She has very mild fever. I shall give her medicine and she would be all right today. Kishori refused to take medicine. But when I insisted, she said with a smile, Well, do as you please. I gave her a medicine. A medicine. The next day, was Radashtam. I was busy on the account of the festival. So I could not attend upon her in the morning. In the morning. In the afternoon, she called me and said, My only concern is that in my last moment I shall not get the darshana of Baba Mahashara. I said, Kishori, you have no ailment except slight fever. Why are you so apprehensive? And Kishori said, believe me, I feel that by Radharani's grace and your blessings, I shall leave this body tomorrow between 8.30 and 9 in the morning. Therefore, you should not start cooking in the early hours of the morning as you do every day. I burst into tears and said, Kishori, will you really leave us all and go? Kishori said, Ma, by your blessings, it appears that it will be so. You decorate me and send me to Braja happily. I'm sorry that I have to leave you, leave your sweet company and to go without having the darshana of Baba Mahasha. So our time is going out. We have just few paragraphs more.
So I will just finish in a few minutes. Okay. It's okay with everyone. So as she said this, she threw her arms around my neck and began to weep like a child. After some time, she contained herself and asked for Mahaprasad. Kusum Dasi brought, brought Radha Kantas and Jagannath Devas Mahaprasad. With her own hand, she gave a little Mahaprasad in the mouth of each one of us and herself took our Adar Amrita or our remnants. The next day, early in the morning, we started Kirtana around her. At 8.30, I saw that she was slowly sinking and accord, uh, according to her desire I said her Sida name in her ear. As soon as she heard the name her name her face became radiant and there was a smile on her face. I placed a garland of Mukunda Vilas or a kind of fragrant, fragrant flowers around her neck. Others decorated her by putting a vermilion mark on her forehead and alta around her feet of that red color. We were singing Bhajanita Go Radeshyam Japo Hare Krishna Hare Rama. She started singing with us. Suddenly, she shouted, Radhe Praneshwari, uh, Prana, Radhe Praneshwari, and became silent forever. Her face was still radiant with a smile, and her eyes were wide open and fixed on some object. It appeared that she was looking at something most astonishing and attractive when she breathed her last. As Lalita Dasi concluded the story of Kishori Dasi's entrance into the Nitya Lila, she began to weep. Baba Mahashaya was moved to the core of his heart. He said with a voice choked with emotion, and eyes filled with tears. Kishori Dasi has left an ideal for followers or upashakas of Madhura Rasa. Her demise reminds me of the Niryana or deliverance of Takur Haridas. Radit. Hey, Radhe. This is so beautiful. I hope, Kishori, I wasn't too fast. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so beautiful. We can see here how much this is important for us. What will be our departure from this world? That is the question. We, who shall we remember at that time? And will we remember our Radha Praneshwari? <laughs> I hope so. 
with the Kripa of Gurudev, Nita Chan, and Radhika. 